Today's song for reflection is an original song I wrote about how when we accept healing for ourselves, often it somehow ends up spreading healing to others. It's called, I Am a Healer. One day it dawned on me when I prayed for healing. It wants to flow through me. Like a gift it wants to give on. Like love it wants to live on. And to flow far beyond me. Skiles, and this is a presence coming from Unity Church in San Marcos. We welcome everyone, not only online, but all of those who are able to be with us today. And I love your beautiful original song. Thank, Thank you, you so much. That's yeah, gorgeous. Beautiful. It's just Very powerful. Gorgeous. So I was going to share with you this morning, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, and Ohm are in a car and they're driving and pulled over by a police officer. Now, Heisenberg is the one who's been driving the car and the officer asks him, do you know how fast you were going? And of course, Heisenberg says, no, but I know exactly where I am. And the officer says, you were doing 55 and a 35. And Heisenberg just goes, great, now I'm lost. And about that time, Schrodinger screams, oh, wait a minute. Uh, it's, <laughs> so the police officer gets real suspicious, and he goes, let me check your trunk. Pop the trunk. And he looks in the trunk. He comes back around, and he said, is that a dead cat in your trunk? And Schrodinger screams, oh, my God, it is now. And then the officer goes to arrest them, and Ohm resists. Okay. That might be a little funky for it off. <laughs> but <laughs> my humor today is really about helping us to be remember that there is a um, reality and power of the spiritual dimension, all right? There is another dimension and another level in which we all move and live. So in 1959, 
Joel Goldsmith wrote many wonderful things, and one of the things he wrote at that time was, what the world needs is healing and re regeneration. The world needs people who, through devotion to God, are filled with spirit that they can be instruments through which healings take place because healing is important to everybody. Now, from my own personal experiences of experiencing being healed through spiritual healing, health is not only an aspect of spirit, it is an attribute of spirit. And it is our birthright as children of God. Now, Unity was founded when Myrtle Fillmore, one of our co-founders, understood this truth and began the process of not only her own healing, but shared that understanding with her husband who began his healing. And there have been so many healings that have occurred through Unity as a result over, the, over, over more than 100 years here. And so we were founded on spiritual healing. Now, I really thank God that you and I can rise up into a whole different experience of life, one of wholeness and wellness. Rise Up is the title for my message today, and it is a message that was offered through to me through a friend of mine, Reverend Mary, I mean, uh, Reverend Robin Volker, and she Bless me with her thoughts and her sayings, and I hope that you too rise up in this day. So there was this young girl, and she had been practicing her gymnastics for several years. She's about seven years old, so it wasn't like most of her life, but still. And she asked her dad, she says, Dad, how do you spell another? And he asked her, he says, well, honey, how are you using that? And she said, well, I'm starting my next year of gymnastics and I want to make a poster that says I am going to um, take my gymnastic practice to a whole nother level. And of course her dad laughs and says, oh, well in that case it's N-U-T-H-E-R. Now you and I have been given an ability that most people don't recognize but many of us do, and that is to see the world of the invisible as a reality of its own. Some of us think of it as our imagination, some of us think of it as pretend, or some of us really experience that sense of the spiritual dimension. So today I'm encouraging everyone who not only is hearing this message, but to take your life to a whole nother level in that spiritual dimension. You and I may seek spiritual healing, for many reasons, perhaps uh, physical illness or mental or emotional difficulties, financial problems, um, relationship issues. I know none of us have any of those things. Maybe it's political disagreements or social unrest. We just feel like the world needs healing, but many people feel that the world needs some healing. And I don't know that there's any doubt in my mind, but perhaps in yours there might be, But I think now is the time for you and I to rise up in our heart, minds, and souls and be a part of healing not only ourselves, but the world as a result. I know that most people in this world have something going on right now in the year 2020, especially with all of the problems with COVID and, and uh, how it may have turned your life upside down. And I know it has done so for many people. So you these individuals that you know that have had their lives turned upside down, they probably could use some spiritual healing. And so I'm offering today four things, four steps that help you and I to connect to a whole nother realm, that spiritual dimension. The first one is pause. The second one is remember. The third is believe, and the fourth is act. So there's four simple steps. Not, well, they're simple, not easy. I didn't say easy, but simple. And so step one on the path to spiritual healing is to pause. For most of us, it means that we have to pause in the midst of whatever's going on. We have to take a breath. And that's the easiest way to pause, usually, is to just take a breath and let go of focusing on what's going on out here 
and turn within to that presence of that which is always at peace. There is a part of our being centered within our being that is always at peace. Now, it requires you and I to get still to find it, but it's there. So as long as you and I are focusing on what's going on out here, it, it's a, not easy and it's usually not even possible for us to look into and see another possibility or even to see into the spiritual dimension or a different reality. So this morning, <clears throat> I'm not going to ask you to pause. Look away from your troubles. Look instead to that spirit within, to the spiritual world that sustains our physical reality. Because the reality is that which is seemingly invisible is that which lies behind all of life. The very cells of our being, everything comes from the invisible to the visible. And, it, and Goldsmith also wrote, he says, it is only possible to heal spiritually when you know the unreal nature of that which is causing the trouble of your experience. And I'll get into that a little more in a few moments. But step one was to pause. Resist the temptation to react to what's going on outside of you, or maybe around you, or within you. Pause and breathe. Because the next step is we need to remember. Jesus Christ, the, our master teacher, told us, my kingdom is not of this world. So that great power that is not of this physical realm, it is the physical realm that responds to that power, though, in the spiritual realm rather than the other way around. And so whatever way you can I and I can make real for ourselves and bring into our personal physical reality, that spiritual realm is how much to the degree to which you and I experience spirit in our lives. And so there is that one truth you and I need to remember. That's all. That is it. In order for uh, you to benefit from the truth, Remember it, know it, and then you know. Should, there's a beautiful verse in the Bible that says, "You shall know the truth, and it shall make you free." And as you dwell upon truth, which is an aspect of spirit, and remember, it's just so basic. It, it, it is that spirit is. Spirit is the life. Spirit is love. Spirit is joy. And, and beauty, spirit is all of the things of strength and, and hope that we have seek in our lives. Spirit isn't giving us those things. Think about this for a moment. God is spirit. God is love. God is health. And so when you and I experience those things, that's when God is moving inside of you. And, and it's expressing into the world through you and I. So as we meditate on it, remember God is the same yesterday. And that nature of God doesn't change. But those attributes are you being able to take those on, to express them. And the more you express them, the more you become one with God. The more you express love. The more you express peace. The more you express joy. The more you express miracles in your life, the more you are one with God. So I invite us to remember. And as we do, we acknowledge the power of God that is needed in any given situation. And we can call that power to expression. And that situation, whatever it is, must respond to the power of God and the power of spirit. You know, a million years ago, God is. And God is today. A million years from now, God is. And what you and I can hold and remember is that God is ising in our life in all of our experiences. We are never alone, even though it may feel like it. So we pause so we can remember the truth. Step three, we believe. Okay. There is only one presence and one power in the universe that is active in the universe and in my life. That one is God, 
the good. And as you and I hold that truth, recognize that, you know, in God, there is no illness. There is no disorder. There is no dis-ease and there is no evil. Now, evil, as we know, really literally means that which causes suffering. So there's no suffering in God. So in this moment, I would invite you to remember that as we focus, as you and I focus more on those qualities of being that are God, that the attributes of God, the more you and I become one with that and express God in this world. What does that belief do as we believe in that, that there is only one presence? What does that belief do? It helps you and I to rise up. It lifts you up so that you not only can rise up into whatever the circumstances are and experience a healing or a blessing of some kind, but you don't have to even know how it, how it has happened or how it will happen for it to happen. Your understanding doesn't even have to have it all together before it can happen. It's not required. Prayer and our life, those things, they're not drugs that change our being or physical laws, but they do change our whole being in a different way. They lift up our consciousness. And you know, Jesus Christ was able to perform a lot of miracles this way because he recognized and became one with that presence of God so fully that there was absolutely no separation. So fully. And so in his healing miracles, illness had no hold. Even death had no ability to take hold over him. And so I recognize that truth. In order for the spiritual healing to occur, you and I are to believe in a power of a reality we cannot see. And that is not always easy. So first, we pause. Second, we remember. Third, we believe in the power of God as being more powerful than all of our problems. Step four, we take action. Now, one of the most powerful things we can do and everybody kind of jokingly says, is it time to pray, uh, you know? But prayer and meditation is the first action we need to take. Because from that is the guidance and the understanding that'll come to us about what it is you and I are meant to do. Prayer opens a channel within you and I that allows the spirit of health, the spirit of joy or the spirit of love to move through our being, whatever it is that our blessing needs to be. And our prayers aren't to change the world around us or people in our life because we know what they're supposed to be doing, right? Or who they're supposed to be. It's to change you and me so that we get to know our own spiritual connection, our own spiritual self. In the Gospel of John, I absolutely love the story of the man who was a cripple who lay by the pool at Bethesda. And the man was lame, as I said, crippled. He was an invalid. And he depended on the kindness of friends to take him every day to the pool. Now, the story tells us that when an angel stirred the waters, whoever could get into the water would be healed. However, this person, being an invalid, could not get himself up or into the water. So every time the angels stirred the water, he simply had to lay there because he could not see any other way to get there than someone to take him. He felt that as he lay there, that he was bound to the condition of his invalidness unless he could get in that water. Jesus didn't see a victim. He didn't see a crippled man. He told the man, rise up, take your mat, and walk. And when you and I listen and read scripture, it tells us that he immediately jumped up with joy. Joy. This is a man who hasn't walked in probably most of his life. 
and he jumps up in joy. And so I think that here is the fourth step you and I have to take, and that is to act. Now, at first, we may have to look as if we are on another level of existence in order to do this. We may have to think that that's where we may have to be, and we may have to be, in order to challenge our withered legs of understanding, to stand and take a step forward in whatever way Spirit is guiding us towards our healing. We may have to challenge ourselves to make good financial decisions even when our bank account is telling us there's a negative experience going on. Or we, you and I be called, may be called to be a better partner to someone in our life before our partner can even be a better partner. Perhaps you and I have to treat our bodies with wholeness and reverence before we experience and allow them to show us wellness. If you want to understand with your human mind, you may be waiting too long. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that you can't experience it. So as many of us study the stars and we go to healers, I offer you this morning, you are capable of being the source of that healing yourself. Spirit can move through you, in you, and as you today. You know, many of us discount the feats of our own spiritual healing efforts. But I want you to consider this. The Wright brothers only kept their homemade plane in the air 57 seconds. But think about how much it changed the travel for humankind. The first automobile only drove one block. The first phone call was only to the next room. And so I invite you that not to give up if your early attempts at spiritual healing don't produce fantastic unlimited results but are limited and small in their result. And right now, recognize that for every time you do anything towards helping yourself or even another to heal spiritually, you heal the world. And our world needs it, needs people like you and me willing to step up, willing to make a commitment, a deeper commitment to being more than we thought we can. Spiritual healing, I'm going to offer this blessing to you. Spiritual healing is now coming through you in this day. It is coming through you and me, through him, through her and her. As you have rededicated your life, and we began by that with this ceremony this morning, I hope that you rise up into a whole nother level of experience, an experience pausing, believing, remembering and believing and then acting because those who are in our lives deserve to have you whole, well, joyous, and free. God bless you. Today's message song, written by Faith Rivera, is about how healing is some, somehow, sometimes, related to our calling. And I chose it really because the first words in the song are, I am called to be a healer. I am called to be a healer for all humanity. I am called to be a dreamer to believe in what can be. I am called to be a maker, be an instrument of peace. I am called to be a giver of abundance I receive. I am called to be a prayer, living out the truth I see. I am called to be everything. Shines in you and me. I 
a mother to nurture family. You were called to be a brother, be strength in time of need. You were called to be a neighbor, see a friend in all you meet. You were called to be a leader, to build community. You were called to be a prayer, living out the truth you see. You were called to be everything. You were called to be, called to be the glory here on earth so all might see. All the love and all the beauty that shines in you and me. Hearted free, we are called to be forgiveness where pain has run too deep. We are called to be compassion, be the wind beneath each wing. We are called to make communion, only then can we succeed. We are called to be a prayer, living out the truth we see. We are called to be everything. We are called to be. Called to be the glory here on earth so all might see. All the love and all the beauty that shines in you and me. We are the living, breathing God and you are one. In me, we're called to be, called to be peace, called to be joy, called to be love, called to be free, called to be peace, called to be joy, called to be free, we're called to be. And so we close this service today. We thank you for being with us, and we pray that your presence experiences the presence of God as fully as you can today. God bless you, and thank you for being with us today.